up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Really wanted to use that new front door now that I've got the lock hardware on there. One more thing, check off the list there. Look at that beautiful hardware right there. Ooh, looking good, looking good. Alrighty y'all, this video, um, I would say today is a big day, but it's happening tomorrow, but this video is gonna be a big one because not only are you gonna be seeing the new cabinets going in and I'll reveal the color here in a second, but we're also gonna be working on getting the fireplace done and this is gonna be super sick. I'm super excited to do this, um, but first, if you guys watched the last video, you saw my closet door issue that I had with the height wise of the closet doors and basically to gain that extra inch that I needed is $100 more uh, per closet. And I'm happy to say that all we had to do was just take a piece of trim, go boom, added that little three quarters up top. It cost me all of like $15. And what, minus the fact that they're dirty, the closet doors are in. I saw a lot of comments of being like, oh my God, bro, mirrored closet doors are tacky. Why would you do that? You're, you're putting this thing into the past and you're trying to make a modern looking house, but trust me, mirror closet doors make the rooms look a lot bigger. Plus, you know, people enjoy full length mirrors and that's like the best, easiest way to do it without eating up wall space. So I stand by my decision to put mirror closet doors. I think it makes the room just look much bigger. So we're moving forward with the master bedroom and getting that closet all dialed in. And I want to show you guys a little trick. I know I've shown it on the channel in the past, but it applies to a lot of different things. And that is attaching things to concrete. So. The bottom track of the closet door here needs this little piece of wood strip attached and then basically you attach the track to the wood. So the wood's kind of that buffer between whatever material your floor is and the track. And obviously this is slab on grade, so we have a concrete slab underneath the vinyl flooring that's in here. Now, they do include concrete nails, which they kind of include pretty much every way that they can imagine you would need to fasten this. They got some like finished nails in here, if you've got hardwood floors, they've got concrete nails, which you guys have never seen them. This is what a fluted concrete nail looks like. It's got these little grooves. I'm assuming those are what the flutes are carved into it. And these do work, not 100% of the time. Probably not 90% of the time. Probably not 80% of the time. Concrete nails are notorious, at least in my experience, for seems like it's working, seems like it's working, and then like on the last hit, you blow out the concrete that it's around, and then this thing just basically does a whole lot of nothing. So we don't really use those for very much, if at all. Instead, the way we attach things to concrete, especially coming from a concrete background, you're constantly having to attach things to concrete. I'll show you guys outside right now. One of the uses for this method is right here. You can see our temporary um, plate that we have that's holding the four by that is holding up the roof right now. One of the main things we use it for is um, temporarily anchoring things to concrete, but it also works on the very permanent scale as well, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. And basically all you need is a roto hammer. Um, I guess a hammer drill would work as well. And you can probably do this with a regular drill with the right bit, a quarter inch bit. We've got some nails here. You can either use duplex nails or sinkers as we call them. And if you're gonna be removing it, we typically use one of these sinkers and one duplex nail. The duplex nail allows you to get your hammer on there and remove it at a later time. Whereas these, you'll have to use a cat's paw to get in there and dig for. But since this is permanent, we're gonna use two sinkers. Now I've already got my mark here where this piece of wood needs to go. I'm gonna take my roto hammer, and it's a little bit overkill for this narrow strip of wood here, but if you go nice and easy, you don't tear the wood up too bad. All right, we are through the wood. Now we're gonna go through the vinyl and right into the concrete. And this goes super quick. It's a little bit dusty, but it gets done quick. So now that we've got our hole drilled, I'm just gonna separate two of these boogers real quick. Let's get your nails in there. Take your hammer. And then basically through friction, those nails wedge against each other in there and that son of a gun isn't going anywhere. And there is your super quick and easy way to attach anything to concrete. The only time I have ever seen this method fail is if there's a giant flaw in the concrete or you are right up on the edge and you blow the whole edge off. But for the most part, that's like a 99% success rate to attach things to concrete. Alrighty, well, I thought we were gonna be doing cabinets in this video, but I just got off the phone with Chris, the cabinet guy that's supposed to be doing the installation, had to reschedule slash cancel slash we don't really have a rescheduled date, so I have no clue when that's gonna happen. Um, but I decided I just need to sack up and knock out today what I've been dreading, and that is painting all of the trim, the baseboards, the door casings. Uh, I, I hate doing that type of painting, but we got it done. Everything's looking nice and cohesive now. Um, worst part is painting door jams. Those absolutely suck, but everything's painted and looks nice and beautiful. We also got the closet doors in the master bedroom. That turned out great. And the bathroom is essentially at this point done. Uh, shower's all nice and clean here. I went ahead and I caulked around the base as well as the shower as well as the toilet. Now my fun for the night is um, 
these old windows here have probably had, I don't even know how many paint jobs throughout the life of this place, as well as something weird's going on with this window to where ugh, they've used some, some stick on like weather stripping there. I don't know if that's to seal it, but it doesn't really close all the way anymore. But there's also been duct tape on here and a bunch of stuff. So I'm basically spending all night scraping all the old paint, old caulking, old adhesive off and it's actually turning out pretty nice. Looks like that when it's done. This is what it looked like when it started. Just like so with crap all over the place. A little at a time here and a little razor blade and a little fun. And I'm gonna end my night scraping windows. We are ready to go here. We've gotten all the materials to knock out the fireplace which are sitting right here. Unfortunately, good old Home Depot was sold out of eight foot pieces of shiplap. Um, and I checked a bunch of Home Depots. They don't know when the heck they're coming. So we ended up having to pay a little bit more money here. And we got 12 footers, which means we're gonna be throwing away a good bit. I kind of strategically made this fireplace under eight feet. That way eight foot everything would work on it depending on what we decided to go with. And well, all that was kind of for nothing. My original plan for the fireplace here was I was gonna go shiplap down, put in a mantle, and then below the mantle we were gonna do some type of stone or tile or something like that. I'm a big fan of stone. I love it. I think it looks great. The only problem with stone is the way that the fireplace is gonna sit in here, there's a pretty big um, like bezel that goes around the fireplace. And if you've got a jagged surface that that bezel's sitting on, there's gonna be little gaps all the way around and it's just gonna look goofy. So the next step would be to do like a glass tile or something that kind of looks a little stone-ish. But by the time I got overwhelmed looking at 8 million different tile samples and all that, and you know, all the glass tiles and the cool tiles are like, I don't even know, 30, 40 bucks a square foot. I decided, you know what, forget it. I just need to get this thing done. We're gonna shiplap the entire fireplace, floor to ceiling here. We're gonna try and pull off a couple of little tricks to make it cool. We'll see if it ends up working out or not. And now I don't think, maybe possibly, the cabinets are gonna get installed in this video now. I'm not really 100% sure, but I will reveal the color to you guys. It's something different, and trust me, it looks a little darker like on the floor here than hopefully it does once they're installed. Plus we have no lights on in here, but this is the cabinet color and it's kind of like a satin matte navy blue. Super like out of something I would ever pick. But number one, they were about the only cabinets that we can get in stock. And number two, I think it's gonna be kind of cool. Like everything in here is gray on white. So I think if we change it up a little bit and throw some blue cabinets in there, the kitchen's not super big. So it's not like this overwhelming, you know, punch you in the face, blues clues, blue going on here. I think it's just enough that it's gonna end up looking pretty cool. You know, there's a chance we might throw all these cabinets together and actually get everything installed. I don't really want to. The prefab cabinets, it's kind of like putting together Ikea furniture, albeit like it's a little bit better than that, but sometimes it's better to pay somebody to do the stuff that your brain hates to do. So we're about to get started here on getting that fireplace done, but I wanna show you guys, we got the doors installed. Uh, still need to put the lock sets on and all that and the hardware. Haven't really got that far yet. We've got the new light fixture here that's gonna be going in the bathroom. I think it's gonna be something cool. I initially wanted to do like a hanging chandelier, like a glass jewel style, like super gaudy chandelier, but I couldn't find anything for under like three or 400 bucks. And that, that wasn't worth my like, this is gonna be funny joke. We ended up with that light fixture right there, which will hopefully get installed here soon. But let's jump on this bad boy and get her knocked out. Now here's an issue we're gonna run into. If you guys remember, none of the floors in this place are level. In fact, they slope pretty heavily because this used to be, we think, like a garage floor or something similar. We've done a good job here of hiding most of that now that you can't see any of the stem walls or anything like that in the building. But what I do know is this side is significantly higher than that side. Oh, who is it? Out of here. Oh, <laughs> your neighbor now? Yeah, 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 wipe your feet, wipe your feet. So we're gonna have to figure out a way down here to hide the fact that that side's lower than this side. So it's either gonna be a rip on a board that's gonna be angled, but we're gonna keep the top straight. I haven't really got that far yet. So I've got my laser line run here, and this will give us an idea of just how out of whack we are. So we are showing, let's say five and an eighth there, all the way down here to six and an eighth. So we're an inch out from that side to that side. Honestly, better than I thought it was gonna be. So what's next? So now we gotta rip a board at an angle. Aren't you doing these side ones first? Well, yeah, but we're, we're planning ahead before we get to the side. Why would you plan ahead? It's true, we never plan ahead. Let's just start building. One of the things um, you can do if you have like a bigger bump out than I did here is you can take the shiplap, just put like a, I don't know, a piece of trim on the corner and then run your shiplap this way as well. 
I don't want to do that. I also don't like to like miter shiplap corners and make the corner. You're kind of setting yourself up to fight it. So what I like to do is I like to put a piece of trim and just butt my shiplap into the trim. I think it looks neater to trim something up and it honestly makes it easier. So instead of like putting a little piece of trim this way and this way, make a little corner piece and then running shiplap, I'm gonna use eight inch material here that I'm gonna rip down. This is about seven-ish inches here. And I'm gonna put one big piece of trim here and then we're gonna take this two and a half or two and three quarter inch material and then we're gonna put that on the front kind of like that so this is what's gonna make up our corner this is the front of the fireplace and then the shiplap will butt in from this side i think it'll be a cleaner look and you know kind of make things easier in my opinion all right so first things first we're gonna do our side panels here so we got to make sure everything is cool and kosher and we got the same dimensions so we're gonna keep it just a little bit shy there it looks like six in a quarter Quarter, six and a quarter. I'm probably gonna take an eighth off of that. I'm gonna go six and an eighth just so we're not fighting it. We'll get the saw set here to six and an eighth. Is your back okay enough to catch my piece of MDF? No, not You gotta, oh, my back. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Now we gotta get our height. We'll go 112 and a half. <laughs> Mark our baseboard. What we're gonna cut with the multi tool. Let's not screw this up. Cut a little bit of caulking that's on top. And she should pop right off. There we go. And of course there was a nail right there. But, looks good. Does it fit? Oh, like a glove. Now we're gonna cut our skinnier material here to put on the face. All right, now the reason I'm putting the rip in the front as opposed to in the back is number one, the back, that seam's gonna get caulked and everything's gonna get painted and it's gonna blend in with the wall there. But, if you'll notice on the MDF, it has a radius edge there. And if you are trying to tie a radius edge in to this flat side right here, or even radius edge to radius edge, it's gonna be a weird little gap there. We want this piece to look seamless. So we have a nice straight cut there, which ties in perfectly with the straight edge there. Now, unfortunately, I am fresh out of wood glue. So we're gonna improvise. We're gonna use a little liquid nails to hold these two pieces together on either side here. Um, obviously, we're gonna shoot it in with the 18 gauge as well, but I just want a little extra security that this thing's never gonna separate and you're gonna start to see that seam later on down the road. Now I'm gonna make the other side up here and before I actually like attach these, I wanna make sure in between the distance stays somewhat the same and this one like drywall wise isn't going out a little bit or that one's going out a little bit. Right now I have time to cheat the trim just a little bit to make it so my cuts are nice straight cuts instead of having to get a little degree of an angle all the way down if the drywall or the framing's out just a little bit. So we've got both of our side pieces made here. Um, Chris is doing a great job holding that one in place. I'm using the laser right now to shoot a plumb line up. That way we make sure that both sides are gonna be plumb. Um, we're still gonna do a little check in between the two to make sure, again, we're not doing some weird angle cut for the shiplap that's gonna go all the way up and down here. But so far, we're looking good. You can see, she's nice and plumb. There's our laser line right there. It runs all the way down. It's a little hard to see right now. But... All right, both sides are attached. I've got our first piece cut down here. I still need to rip it. I've got the laser marking everything out, and there's a one inch difference from that side to that side over there. So we're gonna mark it. We're gonna end up having to cut it by hand with a skill saw, so. Now this is kind of where like we come and do a conundrum of do we start at the top and work our way down and put a full piece up top? Or do we put a full piece down at the bottom? I don't really wanna sit here and mark it out. I probably will mark it out though to make sure we don't end up with like a tiny rip at the top because that would be weird. I mean, at least you got a tool with you and a snack. Yeah. Appreciate it. Alrighty, so let's get to ripping. So we know this piece needs to be an inch higher over here. And then we're gonna zero out on that end. So. 
kind of almost in the angle of the shadow of the level here. Now, if we wanted to be super slick, we could like clamp a board on here and run that, but I trust my hands right now. I'm gonna start on this side, even though I should start on that side, but it keeps more of the wider part of the plate on the material we're cutting. Chris is gonna be my blower. Not oh, fluffer, dude, blower. Okay, okay, okay. Alrighty, let's see how we did here. Should be hitting on this laser line on both sides. And it's gonna be a little hard to see. Maybe you guys can see it on camera, but that laser line is, boom! Nailed it, perfect. Good job, buddy. Thanks, pal. So we're trying to make a decision here now, guys. Um, I've taken the fireplace insert, I've slid it into place, and there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, like real carpenters out there are probably watching this, and you probably do it this way, where instead of just running the shiplap, 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 it shiplap's just gonna end somewhere behind this flange here, and then you just mount, obviously, the fireplace over top, but you have your shiplap running all the way behind it. Most real carpenters that I know would actually trim this out. I don't know, I'm going back and forth. I don't have any trim here. Some two and three quarter material or whatever this is would work well. Three hours to Home Depot and back. <laughs> or, or we work with what we got. Now, I went ahead and just did a little quick layout here to get an idea of what type of pieces we're gonna have running across here. And this piece is gonna end up being a little rip on top of our trim piece. And I don't know if that's gonna make it look like worse than just not putting the trim piece in there at all. So I think in an effort of just getting this thing done today, uh, we're just gonna ship up the whole thing. So uh, it's lunch time. Oh, lunch time. Yep. How is it? It's not bad. Okay. Uh -huh. That's perfect. essentially done we lucked out at the top right there and we only had to rip off like I don't know, less than a half inch and so it still looks like a full piece of there it doesn't look weird it doesn't look like we had some goofy little rip so thankfully sometimes it's better to be lucky than good we've just temporarily obviously set the fireplace in place to get an idea this thing still needs to get painted we've gone back and forth I thought like maybe painting this black would be sick and making it like a I don't know kind of like a focal point in the room Granted, it's either black or gonna be white. We can see what it looks like white now because it's primed in white. And me and Chris were talking and we think we're gonna end up just leaving her white and we'll let the blue accent of the cabinets kind of be your focal point right when you walk in. You told him it was blue? I told him it was blue. Was that a surprise? Chris, did you want to surprise him? No. Oh, Chris, Chris is mad. He wanted to surprise you guys. Next step is gonna be, I gotta get some material so I can build the mantle. You chugging along tomorrow. Say bye, Chris. See you tomorrow. Alrighty y'all, well change of plans on the change of plans on top of the change of plans and this is the last hopefully change of plans but I just got a phone call last minute that apparently the cabinet guy is gonna be able to make it today which means you're gonna see cabinets in this video. Now the only problem is I should have already been in town by now picking up all the material to get the mantle built for the fireplace but now I gotta wait for him because I gotta get him started and kind of fill him in on what's gonna be going on here and we've kind of already been waiting for a while so a little bit nervous. And once he gets here, I then gotta run into town and grab plywood for the countertops. I gotta grab uh, handles, because I haven't grabbed those yet, because I figured I'd have like at least a day in advance <laughs> of knowing before he was showing up. So it's gonna be like a super race at the end of the day today to get all of this stuff in. This is probably gonna have to wait till tomorrow. Well, I said it was the last change of plans for the day. I was wrong. I'm genuinely pissed right now. Um, number one of the plans changed. The counter guy's not coming. 
It's coming tomorrow. Number two, the donkeys just tried to flood the guest house. I'm at Home Depot trip number 11, just so we're keeping track here. Uh, there's gonna be more, because I was gonna grab everything I needed to finish the fireplace, but we had to grab some other stuff today uh, to go deal with this donkey flood issue. Yeah, thank, thanks, buddy. You bringing in the flood crew? I mean, you know, I can bring all the stuff. All right, y'all, well, we have made it back to the ranch to survey these damn donkeys and their damage here. Um, they're already up in jail for now. I'm so sick of these guys costing me time and money. Oh, this, one's, uh, this one sucks. This one really sucks. So the spigot was, uh, you know, oddly long but it stuck out about that far right there and for whatever reason it's pvc in the wall but whatever that was there we had a piece of wood across here well this piece of wood across here and apparently the donkeys decided today they needed to go explore the backyard and granted i was here all day waiting for the cabinet guy who then rescheduled on me but they waited right till i left to go to home depot to knock that spigot off the wall there causing it to flood i mean it's dark right now you guys can't see it but the water flooded all through here flowed all the way and you can probably see how much of it is still like puddled up right here i mean we're talking a lot of water we don't really know for sure but we're thinking it was running for about an hour and unfortunately they broke it off so far back in there maybe you guys can see it in there you can see the pvc pipe i know you know there ain't no way the water shot cleanly out and didn't hit this wall and go down inside the wall. Um, I mean, I could feel the insulation in there. Albeit it's not soaked, it's wet. And there's some water inside the house. So this is the wall that the spigot's on. It's probably about right there or so. And the bad thing is, I don't see any water right here, but there is some water. Hopefully you guys can see it right there, which is on like the perpendicular wall to it. That really worries me as to how far the water traveled. And there's only really one way to even start to find out and figure out. And that means number one, we gotta pull off the brand new baseboard that's fully installed and painted and looks beautiful. Number two, we're gonna have to cut some drywall open after we just completely like drywall into most of this place, retextured this place. It's painted, it's beautiful. And here we are. My absolute least favorite thing in the world is undoing stuff especially stuff we just finished. Here goes nothing. If I wanna like sleep well, knowing that this was fixed right, and that there's no mold and there's no whatever. Um, so Chris gave us one of his blowers. We're gonna leave, we're gonna cut this open. You know, maybe we can leave a blower on. I don't know. We gotta see how much water is underneath the floor. Okay, here goes nothing. Hopefully we don't do more damage than good. Now the annoying part is this is like the longest stretch of baseboard. This is a full 12 or 16 footer here and it's spliced into another piece over there. So like this one's gonna be no fun to remove. Let's try not to break the base either because we'd like to reuse it. So I see a little bit of water right here. I don't see anywhere where it came down, but I also don't know how it would come up. So maybe it just traveled across the top of the floor there and somehow made this corner, but then I don't see any of this concrete being wet. Now there is a stem wall in here, so I wonder if it traveled on top of the stem wall and like a little bit got down, because this whole wall is on a stem wall as well. All right, now this wall feels wetter. I think we're definitely gonna be dealing with some water in here. Let's see what we're looking like under the flooring. Oh yeah, we definitely got water under the floor, so we're gonna, all right. We're gonna pull this whole piece out. We're gonna raise the floor up a little bit. Of course, it's the side of the house that I've piled everything up on, so we gotta move everything here to be able to get some of that flooring up. All right, doesn't look like it got that far, which is good. So that's not wet, that's the wet part here. That's just the self level that the guys put down. So again, it's not that much water. I think we're good on the floor. Now ideally, if there was no concrete stem wall here, the two by four would be down here, our baseboard would be up here. We can cut a hole like below where the baseboard is and we'd be able to slap the baseboard back in and you would never see it um, instead of having to dry, do a drywall repair. But we got concrete here. We've probably got a two by four about there. I don't think we're gonna get away with a whole lot right now of being able to hide stuff, but you can definitely tell it's gotten wet. All right, let's see what we look like behind door number one. 
We are pretty wet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a hole right here where I'm gonna have to get inside anyway to fix the plumbing. And then we'll be able to assess from up here exactly what we need to do. But I think if we can open up enough of the bottom and it's not super bad inside, we get a couple of blowers on this bad boy, should dry out with no issues. So let's see kind of where we're hitting here. Our plumbing's about, we'll call that 19 inches off the outside of this wall. So that means about 14 inches over, we should hit where the plumbing is. It actually feels pretty dry on the backside. Alrighty, y'all, so it broke right here. Obviously, as you guys can see, um, that, that hanger wasn't really doing a whole lot there, or that whatever you call it. Obviously, the insulation's a little bit wet right there. I can pull that out. The backside of the drywall, though, doesn't feel bad. And if you look at the backside of this piece, um, it's not really wet. Don't mind that spider right there. It's not really wet. And if anything, maybe just a little bit of this paper um, here, but nothing in the actual meat of the drywall itself. So I'm thinking if I can cut this open enough down here, we get a blower on it tonight and we just let it air out and dry, I think we're gonna be pretty good on avoiding any mold or anything like that. So I'm gonna pull out as much of this wet insulation as I can, because this is gonna hold water in. But again, I think we lucked out pretty well. So there's definitely water at the bottom plate there. You can see how damp the insulation is down at the bottom. But the good news is, I think all the water stayed on the building paper and the stucco side versus spraying back this way and getting all the drywall wet. So I think it's only this bottom portion right here, which again, we can open that up pretty easily. Yeah, so she's definitely wet down below here. But I think other than that, we're pretty good. Get this piece out. So it looks like it's pretty dry. So I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it came down right there. The water came from that we were seeing over here. Unless again, it traveled on top of the floor and it came over and uh, just started showing itself over here which is a good possibility, so that's good. That means this wall's good. It's just right in this little section we gotta worry about. And I've got enough room up underneath here now that we'll get airflow in there. All the wet insulation's out. And there we go. So it looks like it's from about there to there. That's our only issue, let me feel up under here. Well, the drywall feels nice and dry. Two steps forward, one step back is what it seems like when you own freaking donkeys. And to everybody's gonna mention it, yes guys we should totally fence the donkeys off from the rest of the buildings. It's in the plan, it's gonna happen at some point. The quote I got like a week ago to fence off both properties was absolutely insane. Everything takes money and one step at a time, you know, it is what it's gonna take to get this stuff done. And I want it done right. I don't wanna just put like a wire up and all that. If I'm gonna spend the money, I'm gonna spend the money once, unless I'm doing a guest house, cause I'm gonna spend the money like three times when the donkeys keep breaking stuff. So we've got this blower here, compliments of Chris. We're gonna get this positioned in and then we're just gonna let it go all night and hopefully she dries out. All right, blower, save the day. So now that we've torn everything apart and we got that drying out, now I got a little bit of a conundrum. Obviously we gotta get in there and kind of doctor up this pipe. Do I just cap it and we just get rid of the spigot altogether? Um, and the reason I say that, trust me, I'm a fan of more spigots and more outlets. I think we should have those everywhere. But when we were looking at putting in this gate, Granted, the spigot did stick out like that far. Um, you weren't gonna be able to open the gate inward um, on either way. It was gonna end up hitting that spigot. So either I get the spigot really close to the wall there so we can have an inward opening gate, which is what I would prefer over an outward opening gate, or I just cap that thing and eliminate it altogether. Got a little bit of thinking to do here before I decide on how we're gonna address this situation. Now I thought for sure if there was gonna be a leak in the guest house, it was gonna be from my plumbing down here, but those shark bites are holding up just fine. Now, thankfully, uh, our ranch hand came home about an hour and a half, two hours after I left today, and I got like a frantic message saying, hey, where is the water shut off? And I'm like, oh no, I thought it was the shark bites blew off and this whole bathroom got flooded. I had no idea it was gonna be the spigot out there, but again, um, for as bad as it could have been, I think we might have just skated by pretty well. And we're gonna let that continue to dry out. It's already feeling pretty dry up in there. Come morning time, we should be good. <sighs> and allegedly, allegedly, 
cabinet guy's gonna be here in the morning. So <laughs> I had this area pretty well like cleaned up and tucked out of the way for him so he can come in and work pretty easily, but that's not exactly gonna happen right now. So we're gonna have to work around each other tomorrow. So hopefully, fingers crossed, no more issues. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.